Hey everybody, uh, I talked about uh, demons and angels. If you missed the sermon, you should go just for that fact, because I don't know if that interests you, but uh, anytime I'm preaching on, hey, so these angels were fighting demons, hey, uh, it brought up some stuff that I didn't really get to go after. Uh, we don't always take the, let me call it the spiritual world, we don't always take it seriously. Uh, it can kind of seem like, well, that's fun, or, or or meaningless to me. In fact, some of you might even think, no, that's just sci-fi. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, what, what I believe, what our church believes, we, we lean into, we think there's actually things that we cannot see. Uh, they're real, we just cannot see them, uh, being angels and demons and a lot of other things, right? Uh, so nowadays, I think some of us are diving into that spiritual unseen world in an unsafe way and that's what i want to just quickly i didn't talk about it in the sermon really uh, you might have heard the word uh, clairvoyance uh, it literally means clear vision but it's here's the definition uh, it's the practice of seeking information through means other than the known human senses so uh, the biblical term if you were to dive into the bible about this is the word medium you probably have heard of, of mediums um, a, a spiritist or spiritualist, uh, maybe maybe you just call them a, a psychic, uh, uh, a card reader. Uh, I mean, there's just a long list of, of names of these people or systems. A, prep, a Ouija board. That, that's a, another. Like, there, there are these methods and these people that we are trying to attempt to get information in a in non-human way. And I wonder if you've done that before. Um, gone to a, a psychic or a medium or grabbed a Ouija board off the shelf or or you just have been in a, a circle of friends like, hey, let's do this. Um, I, I do want to bring up that there is danger there that, that you just need to be aware of. Um, I'll read you um, something in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 18. So if you go all the way to near the beginning of your Bible and God giving basically some rules, some laws to these people, I'm just going to read it to you. When you enter the land of the Lord your God, the Lord, when you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, be very careful not to, not to imitate the, det the detestable customs of the nations living there. For example, never sacrifice your son or daughter as a burnt offering. You're like, okay, I've got that, <laughs> got that one. I'm not doing that. But, but watch, and it continues. This is God saying, I don't want you to do these things. And, and do not let your people practice fortune telling or use sorcery or interpret omens, or engage in witchcraft, or cast spells, or function as mediums or psychics, or call forth the spirits of the dead. This is in your Bible. God saying, I don't want you to do this. Some of you are already though thinking, well, what's the consequence of that? Well, can we just first say that God told people, I don't want you to do this? I don't think it's good for you? Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. That's in strong language. It is because the other nations have done these detestable things that the Lord your God will drive them out ahead of you. But you must be blameless before the Lord your God. The nations you are about to displace consult sorcerers and fortune tellers, but the Lord your God forbids you to do such things. So there's your, God says don't do that. In this instance, it was like, this is against the, my law I'm giving you, I forbid you. The New Testament also does bring this up. Just for those of you like, well, what's the New Testament say? What about Jesus' time and post-Jesus time? Acts 19, uh, and there's multiple in the New Testament, just so you know. I'm just highlighting one. Acts 19, verse 18 and on. Many of you who become believers, many who become believers, confessed their sinful practices. If you've become a Christian, you probably have done the same thing. You've confessed to God. Your sin. You might be interested, what, what were they confessing? In this instance, a number of them who had been practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at a public bonfire. If you want to know the amount of people doing this, by the way, because it was normal standard that people were doing this, uh, they estimate now in today's dollars, this was millions of dollars, millions of dollars of these books about witchcraft and sorcery and and omens and mediums all, all of the reason the value of the books was valued at millions of dollars so the message about the lord spread widely and had a powerful effect when they got rid of this here's what i want to say to you this whole i don't know if you're just accidentally scrolling through this but uh, if we want to know knowledge beyond beyond 
what our senses can tell us, what our senses, and we most certainly do, I think. If, if we want to know knowledge beyond what our senses can tell us, we should seek that information from God and God alone. I'm not trying to judge you if you have or haven't, whatever. I'm just saying if there's things that you want to know, God is enough. God is enough to tell you. Uh, Psalm 32, 8, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway of your life. I will advise you and watch over you. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, let me just say, if God's not telling you, you don't really need to know. He is enough. So uh, I thought this might help. I didn't preach on it at all. But as you as you have this, maybe these thoughts, I'm going to go talk to a medium. I want to talk to a psychic. I want my my, my future told. I would advise you, just let me give you, as a pastor, um, don't go that route. Seek information and guidance from God himself. And I assure you that will be enough for you to go where you need to go to do what you need to do to be who you need to be. Thanks.